Welcome back to Axel Magic Trick number 667. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook Axel Magic Trick 666 to 671. All these videos are all about aggregate. That is a new function in Excel 2010. Totally amazing. Similar to subtotal, subtotal only does 11 functions, aggregate does 19. These two new functions, median and mode added, 12 and 13, totally awesome because these are some important statistical calculations. These ones, 14 and 19, also important. They weren't around in subtotal ever before. Now they're in aggregate, and these can handle arrays. And that's what we're looking at. We've been looking at lots of functions, and we looked at all these options for avoiding hidden rows, avoiding errors, meaning calculations without uh, take any consideration hidden rows or arrows. But here in 667, 666, and then the remaining videos we're doing array formulas. Aggregate, if we just go ahead and do aggregate, anytime you see a function that has this array argument like index or lookup or some product, it can handle arrays without having to do control shift enter. Now, in our last video, we did a large calculation with an array. We're going to do the same thing here, but instead of, as in this video, we return just one value, we need to do a whole table. So our table needs to look like this in essence. Our sales reps and their five largest sales, or whatever it might be, you know, uh, um, uh, sports and their five highest scores or whatever, five biggest times. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. Now we're using this one, the top one, uh, the first five videos we use this one, function argument, options, then our array, and then our K, which will be first largest, second largest. So let's go ahead and select scroll down and we want large. Notice there's a small also, totally amazing. In our last video we'll do small. Large is 14, comma. The options, totally amazing. For us, um, we don't have any, at least I don't think so. If we do, if we do we'll come back and change it. I'm going to start with ignore nothing. And if I run into trouble, I can, we don't have any hidden rows, so we don't need that one. So I'm going to just gonna say ignore nothing, comma, array. Now, this is where we create, we have two, or just one criteria, the, the sales rep name. So I'm going to get my series of trues and falses. First, I'm going to get my sales, control shift down arrow, and then I'm going to hit F4 to lock it in all directions. By the way, we'll look at the version of a formula, an array formula that we used to do in earlier versions and compare how we construct the array. But for us, we're going to take the sales numbers first. In this other example, we'll actually take it last. And then we're going to divide by. Now what we're going to do and what the aggregate allows you to do is you can put criteria, true false criteria inside of parentheses and if you have multiple criteria uh, like two, you'd have to put them both inside of parentheses and criteria which means both is true is multiplying or criteria is uh, adding although uh, or criteria would get tricky with this. But we want to open parentheses and we want to build our criteria, which is uh, that column, control shift down arrow F4, is equal to, and now we have to consider our cell references. When we copy it over this way, we need it locked. So across the columns need to be locked. So I'm going to hit F4 and lock the column reference. But when we move down, it needs to go from Galt to Smith. So we leave the row reference not locked. Okay, that is our criteria. Now what is this right here? If we highlight this and hit the F9 key, we see there's lots of falses. Here's a true right here. Now let's just think about this. What's any number? What's this um, right here? This number is 130 and this is Smith. So our string of trues and false is going to have a false here. So what's 130.2 divided by false? Well, it's the same thing as 130.2 divided by 0. So that actually is going to give us an error. That means we're probably going to have to come change this. Let's go ahead and highlight this and hit the F9 key. 
You can see all those divide by zeros. I am not interested in having those mess up my formula. So I'm coming back over here. I'm just going to type a 1 to get the list to pop up, because as you're learning this, it's hard to remember. And ignore error value. So I'm going to select this one. And that will just totally get this aggregate function to ignore all those errors. Now, um, let's do this again and hit um, F9. You can see how we have a bunch of errors and the numbers, right? So then the aggregate will only be considering those numbers. And only the, the numbers only show up when the criteria is true, Control-Z. Now, comma and our K is going to be this. Now, this is the column header, so when you move it down, we need it locked. But when we move it over, it needs to, the dancing ants need to move to 2. So we have to hit F4 key two times. Row reference locked, column reference not locked. Close parentheses. Now, I'm just going to hit Control Enter, not Control Shift Enter. No curly brackets. If you look down here on this one, you can see the curly brackets. That's because for an array form, you have to do Control Shift Enter. Oh, sorry, double click and send it down and then copy it over. I just absolutely love that. The more I've been working with the aggregate, the more I like it. However, let's look. Um, so I know some of you that hang out at the XLS Fun channel uh, do like these array forms. This one, we're always putting the numbers because if we're extracting a large, it needs to be a number. And then we can put whatever criteria want uh, in, under here. And in the next couple of videos, we'll see more complicated criteria. Uh, but notice the numbers come first, then divide, and then the criteria. And then we have the ability to tell the aggregate to avoid the error. Let's see what this function does. And this is a common function. Uh, you say if. And now, even though the large function can handle an array, the fact that the if function, that logical function is expecting one true or false. This is a series of trues and falses, so forget it. You have to use Control Shift Enter. But notice what it does here is it gets a true or a false, and then the if function says um, there's all the logical tests, an array of trues and falses. But this argument right here, value if true, we highlight this whole column here, and notice it's coming second. But Anytime it sees a false here, it does not include that value here. And so criteria first inside of the if, and then the value second. I'm going to control, I'm going to click Escape, but if you're entering it live, you have to control Shift Enter and then copy it down and over. All right, um, we have a few more videos all the way to uh, 71. A couple more, two more arrays, and then one little anomaly that we'll see in 669 about the aggregate function. All right, see you next trick.